so uh, guys uh, very much again welcome you guys uh, it's been uh, one week uh, it's been completed and uh, i'm very much happy uh, i've seen lots of great uh, great feedback uh, from you guys and seen uh, uh, even though five days been done and uh, huge change huge transform i've seen uh, even the day before yesterday i did a one to one meeting with the Uh, the guys who really want to take our initiative further uh, to different uh, cities and different state and all the different universities so i was very happy hundreds of guys was there i think 900 something guys was there uh, they want to participate as a as a volunteer there is a coordinator uh, nater, uh, to achieve our dream of making india future ready again i would like to thank you those guys uh, but yeah guys okay, let's uh, continue with our uh, main topic so we are into uh, the global training of uh, red hat uh, uh, latest version rscsa uh, with uh, python 3 and it's not only the training it is a uh, uh, training about transforming our idea uh, how the industry uh, required the technology how to connect you industry uh, you guys to the industry peoples plus a lot of things like projects and tons of thing we are uh, planning in this particular uh initiative of iic rise 1.0 right uh, so before this I, i would like to have one announcement um i declared uh, the the guy who will uh, give the right answer for the ip address question right so i've seen lots of questions uh, my team have checked approximately every uh, uh, comment that you has given to the ip you know i'm talking about the four octet one right and i proved you in the last two last few classes before that uh, the uh, there is no meaning of the four octet uh, the only meaning is a four byte any number would belongs to the four bytes it might be one octet also or maybe two octet also are the real ip or they actually work in the real form so this is the one i proved you and uh, the guy who has given approximate the right answer uh, is this one and uh, i announced uh, already one goodie uh and beautiful goody for this guy so the, his name is suchit kumar and this dancer he posted somewhere uh i think facebook or somewhere he this guy posted and uh, he is very much close to the answer that i provided dancer f and this dancer if you want to see and look uh, he has provided right so uh, great uh, suchit i really appreciate your effort <coughs> uh and uh, uh, please contact to your group uh, uh, volunteer uh, pass on your address we will courier you uh, the goodie from our side and all all, all the remaining guys uh, goodies that we announced for some other purpose i believe almost everybody has received or maybe in they are in the way uh, you soon you release those goodies right you you'll have uh, those goodies so um, so let's start guys uh, for today's uh, topic so today my main focus area more in python and little bit something about uh, the red hat linux also right uh, so in the last class uh, i have uh, discussed about uh, basics part of python or some of the linux thing but those guy who attend my friday uh, session there is the live training um, I, and even though i suggest guys this is uh, not a pre recorded classes Uh, i just want to give you a feel of life classroom right that is there i am with you live with the with same with your time zone right so i would like to give that feeling so it is untouched or uncut video it is a raw video a raw classroom so you can have a real feeling of the class and almost all the after the class i um, uh, enabled Uh, the chat window uh, so you can uh, talk to me chat to me uh, and uh, whatever queries you have i'll try to uh, answer those query right even though we open this vi- uh, video for 24 hours uh, that your choice you can uh, you know view this video after 24 hours also but the that the thing that i i recommend if you uh, listen live uh, first of all you can put your comments directly on the chat window i can uh, answer that time plus uh, because almost in all the classes i always ask some questions right so if you r- listen on live okay you give the answer you would be the first one who give the answer first right and if you're the first one who give the answer first uh, your name would be always showcased uh, first in our community and lots of benefit we have planned for you guys it will be always given 
uh, to the guys who always answer first, who always take the initiative to uh, you know solve those those problems that we are we are giving in all the classes, right? So this is one point. And but yeah, last uh, last thing is those guys who are there uh, in the uh, Friday session, uh, last few minute uh, of my session due to some um, big network outage in my area, sudden my session got uh, got uh, hang up of last 15 minutes but technically or those 15 minutes i haven't discussed so much uh, you know important topics but whatever i discussed on those 15 minutes okay i will cover again today uh, so you won't miss anything okay so till 50th minute uh, everything was fine but after the 50 50 50 minute uh, my, my from my side uh, we have a, a network issue or the network outage right so we will cover today again those points but before this let me start uh, with some basics of the python okay so let me launch the python again uh, from uh, uh, from my command terminal right so this is the python so before guys i start python i would like to ask you one question guys and again this is one challenging question and those guy who will uh, give the answer of this uh, this particular question guys again one beautiful goodie from my side okay very basic question again the big thing is uh, it is so simple it is so basic uh, that we always you know conclude okay this is the way it work but we never research in this kind of area right so my question to everybody is right what is the use of what is the use of cat command in linux again i'm asking what is the use of cat command in the linux operating system right and let me pose this question over here so you can answer right but my question again guys you understand uh, let me write over here what is the is the right use case right because he, here we are focusing more in the right education right and again if you have a wrong education wrong knowledge right you won't able to do anything great in your life right so what is the right use of cat command command in linux this is uh, my uh, question to everybody okay and those guy who will give the right answer uh, again one beautiful goodie definitely i will we will courier to you right and but guys it looks like so simple it looks like so simple that everyone feel they know the answer right but before guys you give the answer let me give you one small point from my side those guy who seen who think from the cat command we can create a new file we can put the content in the file we can save the file we can read the file we can append the content in the file append the content in the file if you think this is the use of cat so technical guys these are not the use case of the cat okay you know sometimes it seems like that this command doing for something for you but it is not if you think cat can read the file it's not guys something is there behind the scene who helping the cat to read the file something there behind the scene who helping the cat to create this file and put the content and something is there again uh, in the back end who help the cat to append the content in the file so appending the file or adding the file reading the file are not a right use of the cat command kabhi as normally aisa hota hai jo dikhta hai lagta hai ki ye wohi hai jo kaam kar raha par haqeeqat mein wo nahi hai okay this look like cat is doing those thing for you but the cat are not the one who are doing those thing for you so these are the not use of the cat command even though sometimes some guy, guys also say for you the cat command we can concatenate multiple files for example i can read this file also plus uh, this file also so i can uh, uh, read multiple file is called concatenate uh, concatenate the multiple files i can we can do but again these are again not the right use of the cat something else who are working behind the cat for doing these activities who are that uh, uh, program they are, that are running behind the cat for those activities uh, again we have a class tomorrow on this point and that is very interesting class very important class you're going to learn lots of fantastic feature or unique core concept of linux operating system or red hat operating system so tomorrow we'll discuss and tomorrow also you come to know the right 
use of the cat command these look like the use of the cat command but not, technically cat are not the one who are doing these thing behind the scenes there's some other program who, who are doing that we'll discuss so my question guys to everybody is what is the right use of the cat command it is not used for concurrentism or concurrent the thing right it is for something else what is that you can post your answer here right so you have 24 hours let's see who give the right answer and again you can ask this question anywhere in the world any blog documents books any teachers you can ask to anybody uh, the answer of this particular question right so this is one uh, small point my, from my side so guys today my main focus area would be would be python so let's jump directly to the python and be very basics of the python i i already um, uh, you know taught you so this is the python interpreter okay and uh, if you want to print something so we have a print uh, function of the keyword i can print uh, whatever you want to print right now one more thing guys over here is um, if you want to store some data in any of the languages okay so technically you know what uh, why you want to uh, store the data okay because we want to use the data in 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 somewhere in future in our code right so if you want to store any data for temporary purpose right you require a ram or a memory but where my data store in the ram right uh, you know if you store data somewhere in the ram so they store somewhere in the address of the ram right so it's very harder to find uh, where uh, that particular data is stored on the ram so what normally we do wherever we are data store on the ram we give that address a name okay and that name you can give anything like for example x and y and z okay and this name is typically known as reference sometimes we also use the term called variable so technically if you want to store for example data called hello hello it is stored on the ram but where is stored on the ram then we can give the variable called x so x is the one that knew the address of my or the location of my data that is hello and why we know the uh, why we need the address because it is simple because we're going to use hello somewhere in my program afterwards right so technically this is a very basic thing you guys might know so x is just like a holder or the variable that store my data hello so in the normal world we say hello is a data or the literal and x is a variable technically known as reference because it, it know where my data is stored on the ram this is a very small thing second thing if you notice here right in normally in other um, uh, other programming language whenever you create a variable we always uh, give a variable a uh, data type right we always declare a data type and what is data type those guys who are very new in the programming world you can think guys there is this one bottle here okay and uh, if i say it is water bottle for example water bottle it means i have very much specified that this bottle is only used to fill the water okay so bottle is something like a container and whatever i fill inside the bottle is water so technically bottle is like a container what the bottle store a water so here we can think like water is just like a data and bottle is what like a like a variable right but what is bottle is what is this bottle bottle is a variable but what this variable contain only one single value so in this case this bottle is called constant so if the thing is not changed if it's fixed the value of this bar this guy or this this part is fixed it's called constant but if i say bottle so again it means bottle is just a container and whatever you want to fill inside this bottle you can fill it you we can fill some solid item like rice you can fill some liquid item like uh, cold ring you can fill some gases like oxygen or hydrogen something like this so it means this bottle is a container it is a placeholder it is a place where you can you want to store anything what i want to store okay so this is that is the reason this is known as variable okay but when you say it is variable or when you declare the variable when you declare the variable and fill with something it's called assignment so when you assign something or when you fill something inside the bottle or in, in this variable right you have to always declare and say what kind of content you want to fill it 
you want to fill some like some kind of solid item some kind of liquid item some kind of gases so these are known as data types so guys again i know a lot of guys know programming language but i'm just trying to comfortable with uh, uh, those guys who are very new in the programming world right so data type is a type of data that you want to store in the variable okay so now in the programming world uh, in the programming world um, you have uh, you have uh, uh, lots of different data types okay uh, for example uh, for example uh, if you talk about hello so hello is again a data and you want to store hello somewhere where you want to store in some container that is called variable this is a variable or the reference okay but technically in the python this is known as a reference it is not a, known as a variable so what is different with variable or the reference little bit very basic difference will come will discuss in, in in the future but it is it is known as uh, you can say either, either variable or reference it's not so big deal over here but the point is over here is hello is a uh, data and i would like to store hello in the variable x but if you talk about the hello is a data what is data type so typically if you think if anything look like this it is called known as string okay but normally in any other language like c or java you have to always tell to your programming language or your compiler or your interpreter that this data is of a data type called string but here we don't have to tell the python because python is little bit smart language it automatic find the data type for you now again i'm repeating i'm not saying python doesn't support data type i i'm saying python is little bit intelligent language python say you are just a programmer just focus on your programming right don't bother about the data type i will find for you so there is a function over here in the python through which you can find uh, uh that what is the data type python uh you know uh, found for you so python found that x is a string data type so python support a string um, python support data type but you don't have to tell uh, your program what kind of data type it is and one more great thing is guys here is for example x right now the data of x is hello but if i send 5 the value of x is what is 5 but the great thing is guys as you soon uh, as you store the new value and the new value is uh, 5 and 5 is 5 uh, has a data type of integer so python dynamically change your data type but in other language like in c or java if you assign or declare any variable any variable that has having a data type string and if you try to store some other number or other data type it failed with some error but in the python it is not the case it is very a dynamic kind of thing as soon as to you know a new data type or you new data with a different data type it won't give the error and uh, it will uh, change your data type why it is working again we will go in deep dive <clears throat> in uh, in upcoming class so this is the first class uh, you can think of python i don't want to go to that level right now okay this is one thing but this is known as this concept very rare language support not only python some languages we also have in the market that support these are this concept is known as type inference okay so python is a language that support data type inference means if you store hello as a data or because it is where it is a very variable i can change the value but if i can i can change the value of other data type also it won't give there it it supports support properly so guys for example if you see here it is integer now if you try to store x right it store 5.6 but if you try to find the data type of the x it been changed to float and a very small question guys to everybody uh, over here uh, if can you if you can tell me if you can tell me uh, what is the data type of uh, this program okay so it is true so what is the data type of this true Okay, so maybe a lot of guys say it is a boolean, but it is not a boolean. It is a string again. Okay, so guys, notice one small thing in any programming language in the world, right? Whatever you write between the single quote or the double quote, it is always be string. Even though if you put ten also in a single quote double quote, it become a string. But if you want to store true or false as a boolean, you have to use without single quote or double quote. Then it become a boolean like zero and one. Okay, true or false you can use. Okay, you can use false. Okay, and and notice one thing here: true or false is a predefined special word. 
right? Where in the true or false, the first character should be in caps, right? Otherwise, they give there. So in the t, uh, t or f would be in the capital for the boolean it's because it is a predefined some kind of variables, right? So it's very basics about uh, you know how to assign and type inference. One more thing, guys, if you talk about Python, Python support lots of data type. Okay, so if you talk about the Python, it support lots of data types. Okay, uh, for example, one data type it support is string. One data type it support is called number. And when I say number, again number has either it integer, it is a float, or it is a complex number, something like this. It support one more data type called uh, something like array, but we'll discuss today it list. They support one data type called tuple. They have one data type called byte. One have, they support byte array. One they support dictionary. Lots of data type they have. Lots of means there are tons of data type uh, Python support. But I don't want to bore you guys to explain all the data type. What I believe whenever uh, we have some kind of use case or some requirement come up, that time we will explore that particular data type. It is simple when the requirement come up that time if you under, if you take those particular uh, you know concepts or the need you understand better uh, those concepts plus you also understand why we would like to use tuple if tuple is there or list is there why we would like to use this right so today guys I just want don't want to go for further data type for example but when I go for networking that time I actually explain what is use of byte data type okay when I go for for example uh, for some kind of uh, computer vision kind of program if sometime we require or image processing that time I will explain you what is use of byte array okay, so I don't want to waste for right now the time or to give the all the names or the data type the Python support uh, rather than just today just look very basic data type that we normally keep on using for uh, for in all the day-to-day -day life right so let's uh, little bit start something about string the so string is one data type right let's little bit discuss more about the string okay so for example uh, let's say y is a variable and uh, I would like to store uh, <coughs> uh, data here called hello uh, this is Vimal. so this is x y is just a variable and uh, it store a data having the data type called string and if you want to print the y, either you can use print function or because right now you're on the REPL, uh, REPL means here R means uh, P means uh, print. So without use, using the print command also, uh, you can print uh, your string without the print function. Okay, this is a very small thing. Okay, now the important thing is guys, in the Python, that is very, very beautiful, right? So in the Python language, in the Python language, the string is not actually a string. A string is a, a sequence of character, right? So technically, in the Python, right, uh, the first character is a uh, is independent. This e is independent. L is independent. And every uh, sequence of character they give some number, the place number. This is called index number. So this is zero. This is one. This is two. Something like this. Okay, and for last number also, they give the number, for example, in the last number is minus 1, last number is minus 2. So, in the reverse order, uh, order also, they have given this kind of number, right? So, technically, so what can I do? Okay, because every character has uh, some unique uh, positions, right? So, what can we do? What can we do? Okay, okay, for example, this is my string. Okay, so I can say, uh, do one thing. I just don't want to print the complete string. Uh, do one thing uh, whatever we have in the first place just print it H whatever we have in the fourth place just print it is O okay we can do or we can also write whatever we have in the last place just print this is L okay even though we also give the range also okay so for example what I want I would like to give the range uh, from here to here so whatever we have from here till here print this for example this range may, may be for example 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. From 6 to something, right? So we can give the range. So how to give the range? So whatever we have in 6 is T. But I would like to print from 6 till 10th place. So it show me this, right? So it's very beautiful uh, range function that we're going to use a lot in uh, the upcoming all the Python, uh, you know, uh, core concepts. This is uh, the way we do the range. 
and for range we use a, a special operator that's called colon and this operator is also known as slicing operator why I say slicing because we are slicing our string so we are slicing our string we are cutting our string so this kind of operator we use uh, for the range okay one more thing even though we can also use this way uh, for example uh, <coughs> from 2 to 4 for example so they start from 2 right 0 1 2 2 is l until 4 and guys 4 is uh, actually o so but in the python due to some reason the last number is exclude so they give the range to 2 to 3 so the last number is always exclude for example if i start from 1 to 4 they start from 1 till 3 1 2 3 the three number they print last number exclude again why they exclude uh, will again have a very small discussion why in the python they exclude the last number okay this is one thing but you can give the range something like this also like uh, nothing then call in 4 it may start from 0 then go till 4 or we go, we can also give the range something like this 5 call in something we start from 5 and till the last what uh, whatever data you have till last just print completely so you can also uh, do in this way also okay one more thing i would like to tell you here is okay but this uh, the, the variables that i have is this one it's called string uh, whenever you uh, give the range for example uh, 1 to 6 okay so the slice from 1 to 6 but technically this is not the, not the complete syntax of uh, the slicing technically uh, they also has one hidden feature here that you use after the colon 1 so if you write this, if you don't write this, this is the same meaning, the same output come up. So what is the meaning of this one? Let me explain you in my whiteboard. Okay, so, so if you write this part, if you write this part or if you don't write this part, it's the same meaning. Okay. But, it, but what is the meaning of this one? So this is the default feature of the slicing operator. And uh, the name of this feature is called jump. What do I mean by jump? jump means okay i start from one i start from one one this is one okay till six this is a six till here for example okay and when i start from one then whatever data i have in the one place i print e then i jump to one then i uh, go forward one next place uh, you know uh, next uh, position or next address of pointer by jumping one and whatever we have in the next one place i just print then go one so this is like a loop and in the looping i just uh, changing my pointer uh, keep on going to the uh, to the one one place right so what i'm trying to tell you guys here is if you have a requirement where you want to print everything from one to six but not everything i would like to do the jump of two two they first print one then they skip two, then then print third, they skip three, four, then they, they uh, print five. You can use this thing. You can jump in this way. Or if you have a requirement, for example, this is complete, um, you know, uh, string, and you if you want to print everything, either you can write in this way, or you can write in this way also. It's the same thing, right? Start from zero and till last. Okay. But what I, you want, you want to have a jump of one uh, of uh, two two. For example, by default, if you write one or don't write one, by default it is jump one. Same thing, right? But if you like, if you like to give, uh, you know, jump of two two. So in the string, you skip one 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 character. It will be something like this. So if you want to remove some character in between, like e, then l, then some space. Okay, so you can use this this character, right? So technically, string is a sequence of character, and uh, colon is a slicing operator. We're gonna use a lot, a lot of of uh, you know when I go for advanced stuff. Even though when you go for data science or machine learning, right? So you first of all you are very great in Python, and in the machine learning or in the data science, this type of operator, or even in the uh, computer vision or image processing, this kind of character we use a lot. Even though believe me guys, uh, biggest, lot of uh, high-end uh, image processing, you know, uh, you, uh, in the images, you you put a trigger in a mobile phone, in selfie, you crop your photograph, those advanced, you know, code implementation, you can do very easily by this kind of setups. 
so if we got a time we'll definitely try to touch those point uh, but uh, if you your plan mm -hmm. is to go further deep dive in data science and those world these are the very very core concept we use use a lot there okay this is one thing uh, so guys one more concept i will tell you here is this is my string and if you want to print the last character minus 1 but if you want to give the range for minus 1 till minus 5 to minus 1 they, they print the last four character minus 1 is exclude so they print till vim8 but you want to print the complete uh, till last you remove it so they start for minus 1 so this is minus 1 till the last now what we can do we can do one trick here so for example if you have a requirement I would like to reverse my string even though we might have some function available in the market you can reverse the string but using this slicing operator or your jump conserve over here we can do one trick to uh, you know reverse your string how for example what it do it start from zero until last then what it do it start from zero until last and jump of one 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 okay now if i do in this way for example okay if i do in this way i'll start from minus one okay i start from minus one what is the output would be l okay the output would be l then what i do if i jump with minus one not one right by default is one if you write if you don't write is one but if i start with minus one I start with minus one. Okay, it will print L. Then I jump with minus one. So what is my value? If we plus minus one minus one is what minus two. So what is minus two? A. Then if I minus at minus two place again, I jump with minus one. What is become minus three. To so keep on running till what? Till everything is completed. Till everything completed. So very small trick I used. It will re it reverse my string. So I know it's very small, small concept you can use to, you know, manipulate and uh, do some kind of this logic. Even though we don't want to use this concept, uh, you know, we don't use, uh, we don't require to, you know, reverse my string. But just, I'm just trying to tell you if you have uh, some basic idea uh, how the slicing operator work, you can create this kind of scenario. Okay, so this is very basic about the string. Let me show you some more basics that we normally use in the string. For example, uh, this is a y, this is my string. And for example, let me create one more string. Uh, this is my data, welcome you, something like this. <clears throat> so this is one string I have. When you print your string, as it is your string prints uh, in your screen. <clears throat> but what I want, I would like to um, I would like to give the new line over here after data I would like to give the new line so for this you can use a special character called backslash n okay so what backslash n will do so this is a sequence of character right and if you want between the sequence of character right you want to escape your sequence either with new line or with a tab or some other special characters right you can use this kind of keyword and that is a reason this kind of keyword is known as escape sequence okay so now what happened now if i print y it give uh, it give like this but if i print y one minute if i print y one minute it will give the uh, a new line character <clears throat> But with why why won't give the new line character again we'll discuss in a minute in a minute why they won't print here okay so they print the new line character but if you want to have not a new line you want uh, to use a tab so it will get the tab space so this kind of character what they are doing they are escaping a sequence of the word or the characters so that is the reason this kind of word or this kind of character Vexus N for new line, Vexus T for T tab, it is known as escape sequence. Again, though uh, you guys might know uh, uh, if you ever worked in any programming language, it's basically basic thing. But if you have a requirement, okay, if you have a requirement uh, where what you want, <clears throat> you want, uh, <clears throat> for example, uh, let me create one more variable X here. And what your requirement is, you want to print backslash N. Okay, you want to print backslash n. 
okay right now if if i'm trying to print backslash n uh, uh with this string it won't work so whenever you write backslash n in a string you print it like it is a escape sequence they process it and the what is where uh, the meaning of the backslash n they will do, uh, print over here for example backslash n means new line they print over here but what is my requirement my requirement is they won't process the backslash n whatever i write as it is the print okay and for this in most of the languages uh, we instead of we use double quote we use single quote and that is a big difference in single quote and in the double quote so whatever you write in the double quote it means any special character we write for example as escape sequence they process it or you can say they parse it and what are the value of 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 uh, this backslash n they give the output with a new line but if you write single quote okay so whatever we special character we have in the in the single quote they won't process they won't parse and print as it is so this is the meaning uh, difference in single quote double quote in most of the language but guys understand here this is not a difference in the python language python doesn't work in this way so in the python the meaning of single quote and double quote is exactly same but in most of the languages the difference in single quote is different double quote is this one in double quote whatever special character we write they parse it and what are the value they print it but in the single quote they won't parse and they will show you as it is but but in the python language there is no difference in single quote and double quote it means if you have a requirement to print your string as it is then what you have to do you have to tell your python that this is my row string don't process this print as it is and for this you have to make your string row and making your string row we have to use one spe <coughs> a special character in the front of it is called r now if you try to print the print as it is okay, sometimes we require to print our special character also like backslash n something like this you to make your string row and for making the row you to put r in the front of the string guys understand guys one thing is r is outside your single quote or double quote and there is no space okay so it make your string uh, make your string row okay this is a one way to do in the python other way also we have we can do some escaping so guys one one very small question uh, to everybody okay everybody is uh, uh, if your string has some kind of a special character okay and in the python in the python uh, double either you put double quote or the single quote they process the string the first look what all the special character we have the first find and if we have this special character they first process this and then they print okay what is this concept is known as again i am repeating my question okay in python or in any of the languages right whenever you print any string when you print any string this is my data when i say Uh, in the string if you have some kind of special character like here escape sequence okay so whenever you use your string either print or do uh, or use somewhere else right your string if contain the special character so what your program will do first they go each and every character and they find the, do we have a special character yes if they have they first process this then they do or print something so what is the name of this process it means whatever you write in the double quote or in the single quote in the python they process your string first and then uh, they do your things so what is the name of that uh, particular uh, process okay so just try to find guys by yourself that has some special name if you say that is known as parser technically not parser has little bit different name meaning it is a parser they have some uh, interesting vocabulary uh, uh, given in our programming world so what is that vocabulary uh, that we used uh, for 
for this particular process even though let me tell you the vocabulary right uh, just it's a very small thing so technically uh, if, if if you talk about the python or any other language whatever you write between the double quotes when the python whatever you write in the double quote or single quote right they first go and process and then they give the output that this concept is known uh, technically in the programming world is known as interpolation so they interpolate so if you if you if you ask in, like in php language uh, which kind of code we use for interpolation you said double quotes single code doesn't use for interpolation like for example in php language okay but if you somebody asks i want to interpolate my string uh, which code i used in python for interpolate so we use double quote also we use single quote also uh, single quote also uh, for interpolation right so this is one talk one vocabulary we use even though we do if you don't know the vocabulary name doesn't matter you should know how to program but this is the one vocabulary we use here okay one is very sm small thing one more thing i guys i would like to tell you here is is very beautiful a uh, lot of beautiful features we have in the python for example if i ask you uh, this is a string this is uh, vimal and uh, welcome you something like this so if i ask you as a human being right as a human being does this string contain any word called vimal you obviously you say yes because you you are human you know uh, the english language you say yes uh, it contain but same thing if i try to ask our programming language right so i don't know um, if you ever work in c or java some other languages you you to write a code some code that will split your word then you write condition or loop and lot of thing you do and then uh, the, uh, when you run that program they'll tell you okay this um, string contain vimal right but in in the python it's so simple because the uh, gado van rossum uh, the, who the guy who created python tried to make this language so simple uh, like a human being like we talk actually so what he did he say if if you have this kind of requirement Uh, how human being talk you know you know how i'm i'm asking to you i'm asking does this string contain vimal word so it's the same way i can write the code does vimal word is there in x that's all this is the way we write the code if x is there if vimal is there inside x then it's a true but if i ask does uh, red hat is there inside this x this is false so this kind of concept we use a lot uh, even though uh, i have a great plan in my projects where i would like to create my project with something like this uh, rather than uh, you know when i create linux and python integration project in the future uh, rather than i'll create some kind of typical uh, automation system for example i say okay uh, you know even though you guys doesn't know what kind of project we are going to build but you know in the industry uh the project that we normally use to integrate python and linux is uh, very complex to manage but what i will and we will do in the project right uh, i will discuss in the upcoming class we make this project to feel like that we are talking to human being okay so my project will be there in the front of me uh, that has a linux and python integration and we going to talk do that the, with that project and uh, you feel you're not talking to the python you're not talking to red hat linux you're talking to some human being so some kind of that feature and flavor we going to give to our uh, project finally and there we going to use this small small piece of feature of the python that make our program very much interactive right so we'll discuss when i start building the project after some time but this very small small features of the python so in is a keyword here in the python uh that is used for that purpose okay so this guys this is something about a string even though we can we have lots of advanced features of string also okay uh, that will keep on discussing when we we require uh to use the string in detail but very high level basic concept i have uh, given to uh, you about the string same thing with number we already seen the number how the number look like for example this is y i say 5 It becomes five, right? Straightforward. Then why it is four point five? It's four point five. It's float. We can find the data type. Okay. Even though we can use the complex number also, but technically we don't require complex number to run projects. Uh, 
if we have some requirement we'll definitely discuss in in our uh, project right so this is uh, uh, two uh, uh, or three basic data type we discussed right but the great thing guys uh, uh, the data type that i would like to discuss uh, with you today that is very important and we going we use this data type a lot and the use of data type is is pretty simple guys the the use is you know what whatever your data store in a variable has a limitation the limitation is right if you store uh, 5 in the y y become 5 but if you change the value of y to 10 the whatever data we had stored in y that was 5 it overwrite with 10 it means in one variable i can store only one single data at a time why because this is just a normal variable here in my case it is integer but we have a special data type right where what can i do i can store multi value for, for example i can store two also then we have to we, we can use comma six also then we can use comma 98 also we can put comma high also comma 8.7 also okay and the beautiful thing about this kind of variable and the data type is in the one single go i had to i have stored multiple data all data stored even though some data is integer some is string some is float it is stored all the data and and if you try to find the data type of this data is is it is tuple or tuple the tuple or tuple is one kind of data type where i can store multiple data on a go it's something like array not exactly array but something like array okay this is a beautiful thing about tuple and again because it stored multiple data if i print y it print everything but again if if you all like to print only 89 or high so this also has a position like this is the zero position this is one or two something like this so i can say y so whatever you have as a zero position print it whatever you have at last position minus one print it and even though whatever operation you guys learn in uh, string uh, we can do here for example this is y to do one thing i can use the range also to so start from one till four sorry to so start from one till for example three so whatever operation of slicing we we'll learn in a string exactly same operation i can also use in in tuple okay even though i can say for example start from we call in till six or till four it, it print till four and obviously last number is excluding the python so that uh, they print till three okay but only uh, the you know uh, the thing that is uh, not there in the tuple is tuple is read only means if you created this tuple and now after a while you feel i don't want to store 89 here i would like to change so how can i change 89 is, is what at the second position 0, 0 1 2 89 and if you want to change the 89 okay you can replace with 10 for example it won't work okay so what the error is come up tuple doesn't support item assignment it means whereas as soon as you create the tuple right you won't able to change it because tuple is read only but in technical programming world it we have one vocabulary here instead you say read only it is known as immutable so as soon as you create tuple you won't able to change the content or the value of the tuple neither you can append you can add or remove you can't do anything and that is the difference between tuple and the list so whatever you can do in the tuple we can do in the list but list is rewritable means immutable uh, means as soon as you create the list you can also append change all those things right for example if you want to create the list how we can create for example x is our data and I would like to store a lot of data here, something like this. And you want to create this X, not a tuple, as a list. So for this, you have to put this data between the square bracket. So anything you put between the square bracket, it become list. But whatever operation you do in the tuple, you can do here. For example, it is a zero position. What one? What did we have in the minus one position? 7.8 what we can we give the range from minus 3 to colon all the operation we can do here but the great thing about the list is that is not there in the tuple for example if for example i have the value uh, at the second position is 6 right? so in my second position i have the 6 
But if you want to change this value, right, for example, from 55, it won't give the array to be changed. Okay, so in the list, we can change the value also. So uh, the only difference in tuple and the list is uh, we can change the value. Okay, so this is one thing. And one more thing, guys, here, if, if I lie right here, so technically in the Python, whatever we have a data between the double quote and single quote, it is always string. Whatever you see, the number is a number. Okay, whatever you put between the square bracket, it is a list. And whatever you put between the curly braces, it is always tuple. Means, it means if you see the y we created is what? If you see the data type of y is what tuple. So when you print the y, it always print the output between the uh, parentheses. So that is a reason it is always good practice. Whenever you want to create any tuple, always put your tuple between the curly braces. If you don't put if you don't put it will create tuple finally but it's always good practice so your code will be more visible or more uh, read readable so always put when you want to create tuple always put your tuple uh, between uh, the parentheses okay so this is the way we normally python understand which is tuple which is list uh, which is string similar like if you go to dictionary we'll discuss in the future right now i'm not discussing that is dictionary because this is a data type but we don't use very frequently we use but we don't use so frequently uh, so it will be represented like curly braces we'll discuss whenever we uh, that these topics come up okay but these are the very common data type what i'm explaining right now string number list tuple we use very frequently that's the reason i'm explaining uh, the syntax and how we use okay but what is the you how we use i explain you but what is the use cases of list and tuple string uh you come to know when we start building the code and we start integrating python with the linux or some other technology maybe data science you come to know what the different use cases of list and tuple come in play but one guys one great question to everybody again okay the good great question over here is the only difference between tuple and the list is okay in the tuple we can't change a data and list is we can change the data so guys my, my biggest concern here is okay just for this small difference small difference we have created very new data type a very new data type okay so i don't think so i don't think so uh that just for a small difference that you can, one is read only and one is uh, rewritable uh the the developer of the python has created the new data type okay so what, what i'm trying to ask you here is okay if you ask what is the difference between tuple and the and the list 99.9 percent .9 everybody say uh the difference is read only and read uh, rewritable that's right but this, I don't think so. This is the only difference, okay? Because this, for this small difference, I don't think so. The developer of the Python has created a very new data type. You know, it takes a lot of time, energy to create a new data type. So my point is, guys, here is again, what is the, what is the right difference between list and Python? okay so if you say in list it is um mutable and tuple it is immutable means read only i am i agree with you that's the, that's true but i don't think so just only for this small difference uh, these guys has created a new data type right i think there should be one big core difference is there in the market and because of that big difference uh python developers or the creators of the python wanted to create a new data type maybe list or maybe tuple so what is that core difference in list and the python i would like to understood from you guys so again just find this answer and post in this group okay let's see who know or who can find this difference and again it looked like a very simple question okay those guys who doesn't know about ic drives they feel okay it's a very simple question uh, anybody can tell the difference between tuple and list, but it is not like this. We know the difference, what the world know. I given this answer to you. But my question is, and my intention is, 
this is not the only difference there should be a great difference there should be very big difference or other difference between list and tuple uh, and that that's supposed to uh, uh, you know tell developers of this uh, you know python to create a new data type right so guys what difference kya hai jiske karan tuple or list bana hai okay to wo mujhe aap samajhna aur guys understand uh, believe me if you know that core difference in the tuple and the list you can do again lots of thing in the python so believe me but agar aapka kehna ye hai ki sirf read only hai aur read hai तो वो सब जानते हैं पर उससे कुछ बड़ा अचीवमेंट नहीं कर पाएंगे बिकॉज आई डे सिंपल इफ यू आर अ डेवलपर एंड फॉर एग्जांपल यू क्रिएटेड लिस्ट ना इट इज योर चॉइस यू वांट डोंट वांट टू चेंज डोंट चेंज इट सो व्हाई व्हाई वी वांट टू क्रिएट अ न्यू डेटा टाइप फॉर दिस बिकॉज दिस योर कोड इफ यू फील यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू चेंज एनीथिंग डोंट चेंज ओके तो देन यूर एक्स यू नो देन यू लिस्ट बिकम वर्क लाइक ए लाइक ए रीड ओनली राइट so i don't think so for this particular small difference the developer of the python has created this two data type okay this is other big difference should be there what is that difference i would like you to ask i'm as i i'm i'm i wanted you just to go and try and find by yourself okay so this is one thing last thing guys uh, for today about python and this topic is very important and i would like to uh, <clears throat> Guys, this answer I already given you. List is immutable. Tuple is immutable. Every no. So this is not your answer, right? We know this uh, answer. Pratik and Lokesh have uh, put here that that list mutable is, uh, tuple immutable is. I have given you the answer, right? And because list so uh, tuple immutable is, we cannot change it. It is security. But obviously, if if you want to change anything, if you want to change anything. it is it work for some security practices but always but my point is guys it it should be not the only reason jiske karan list so tuple bana hai koi bada reason zarur hoga right jo bahut kam log jante hain right just i am just trying to ask you just go and find that reason wo technical reason kya hai okay this that's my main main intention right and guys one last thing for today and this topic is very important i highly suggest um please uh understand okay do one thing let's let's don't discuss this topic because because either you know what happened lots of guys over here are very new in programming language very new in python they might be confused so take take this topic tomorrow it is very important topic why because the topic that i am going to discuss you right now is very basic topic of python but if you understand this topic uh, you can do great job in data science world to aap mein se wo log jo ai ya data science ya machine learning mein kuch karna chahte hain to the topic that i am going to discuss right now that i will take tomorrow right it uh, that give a high level advantage in your data science world okay even though i worked a lot a lot in ai world data science world Uh, but this kind of core concept uh, that i will i am going to discuss you right now or maybe i will discuss tomorrow will give a lot of advantages okay so finally guys don't treat this classes not just for python classes or linux classes uh, in this classes i am going to discuss lots of thing so whatever your future would be you want to go in ai world data science world machine learning world iot world cloud computing world devops world or the core principle of those world Uh, will be uh, clear for you right so don't treat this class just for linux and python because again if you see my profile i worked in all those technology a lot but agar mujhe linux or python ki knowledge nahi hoti to i can't able to do anything great in any of the technologies right so i highly suggest take this these topic python and linux uh, and very serious as a very serious note if you want to do anything in any of the technology believe me okay and one more last thing guys uh, for to for today is is uh, guys if you want to work in python either you install your python you know operating system like in red hat we already have python 3 in windows we don't have python you can install some software available in the market you can get the python but if you want to do any programming um, practice or programming you require the operating system right but we have some way without having the operating system if you want to practice some language like in python 
we can do it okay for this we have a lot of website available in the market okay one website that we have one website that we have okay is called rappel it so this one website called rappel it it is an online website so what can uh, what can you do over here right without uh, having any operating system like windows or python or, the, or without installing uh, python you can uh, you know do your programming live over here and get the output okay so it means you can open this website for mobile phone also they can do python practice in mobile get the output there only right so for this either you can log in from account uh, create a new sign up or you can create a new REPL here so just creating clicking on the new REPL a new REPL okay here they're asking which language you want to work on C++ Ruby Google lots of long languages they have but I'm looking for Python just search for Python okay which version you want Python 2 or 2.7 so if I go Python it become Python 3.6 or 3.7 they pick and create REPL that's all it's so so uh, so uh, you know uh, simple simple UI you don't have uh, to uh, have any operating system but understand guys one thing they are booting this REPL okay it means technically behind the scene this website is launching one operating system for you and inside that operating system they are launching python 3.8 or Python something okay and here you can do your practice all the uh, things that you know x 5 then print x okay this is like a live REPL but you know guys in the live interpreter nothing did none of the data is saved but you want your program to be saved and also run you can type your program here for example x 5 then print x okay mm, 5 plus 2 okay put in z or format okay put in for your y and print y something like this okay now whatever you write here the program also save in some file and also you can run from here and they run this program and give the output over here okay and this code will save in this file but one more thing guys uh, if you refresh your browser none of uh, your data might loss so if you want your program to be saved forever you just have to sign up and then all the code that you have whatever you have created will be saved uh, for you forever okay so you can also create your account over here okay and one more small thing one more small thing uh, one minute <clears throat> okay one more small thing uh, even though uh, we, we, if you want we'll talk in this uh, technology uh, in detail okay but i don't know have you noticed or not over here it is very beautiful technology all right uh, when i launch with new REPL, you know what happened for example let's i go for python i create new REPL. if you notice one thing if you notice one thing they are loading right you know what they're doing behind the scene they are they are installing new operating system for you okay it means because it is simple if you want to as a user if you want guys please notice uh, you know uh, just please take atten attention in this point is a very important uh, uh, concept I'm just explaining to you uh, as a user if you want to do something in the Python Python is a language for working in the Python you want the operating system and for for having the operating system you have to install the operating system and technical guys, if you ever install any operating system like Red Hat or Windows, it takes somewhere out 30 minutes. 30 minutes take to install the operating system. Then you start your operating system. Maybe take maybe one minute to start the operating system. Maybe five seconds to uh, to uh, log into operating system. Then you start doing Python code, and uh, as a user, you you can use your operating system. Okay. So my point is over here is guys that is very important. Right? How come is possible? right this side install your new operating system technically they install the new operating system for you then they boot the operating system then they launch and give the login screen of your python within uh, some seconds i think three or five seconds took right. how is possible you know why is possible because today's guys the technology has been transformed right i don't know guys uh, because in our in our college education none of the guys uh, train uh, or uh, you know uh, aware these kind of technologies what is world is moving towards 
uh, to the students and that's very again very bad uh, the big thing is today's world whatever technology we are using right uh, from you know five or six years ago it's been completely been changed the world technology has been transformed in very new era and what is that era again i am going to discuss in upcoming classes but here you know what we have one of the great technology in the market that it changed the complete technological stack is called docker and the beautiful thing is docker is one kind of tool or technology right what it do right if you guys ever install any operating system it took 30 minutes or 40 minutes or 20 minutes using the docker technology you can install any operating system approximate any operating system right complete install complete os boot and launch everything just in one second it's so much great technology okay and in today's every core company are using a docker or docker kind of technology in the market okay so just even though we are in not in the docker tech uh, docker training but i'm just i thought to just tell you the name right these kind of site amazon google these kind of companies are using docker or docker kind of technology a lot Maybe in the future, if I got a time, I will try to show you some demo on the Docker, and then I show you just in one second, you always, always boot up, right? Launched. Not only boot up, it launched. It installed the complete OS. It's something like that. Or, or normally, when you install any operating system, you require one GB RAM and two GB RAM, right? But using the Docker, you can install approximate any OS just in 10 MB. Just in 10 MB RAM, you can install the new operating system. For example, if you have a laptop size of, uh, <clears throat> of uh, for example, um, 8 GB. So in, normally in 8 GB, uh, using this Oracle Virtual Box, if you ever using Oracle Box or Box here, you can install one or two OS, or you can run one or two OS. Or sometimes it also go, goes hang up, right? But using the Docker, right, just in 8 MB RAM, I can install or run, run also, in the same time, hundreds of OS in parallel. Okay, so it's something like this, right? So if i got a time i will definitely discuss docker in upcoming class if you want but it is not a part of our rss and python training just i'm just i thought to I'll just give the name to you similar like docker again tons of technology we have right as and when uh, require i will definitely discuss some uh, terms the name and maybe some demo also if you want i will show you about these technologies right so that's all guys about today uh, so two or three questions guys I asked you and those questions answer I will give you in the next upcoming classes and guys understand one thing all the questions that I ask you uh, somewhere I will give the answer don't worry don't think so I'm not giving the answer of some of the questions I will definitely give when the respective topic come up mm -hmm. and today's the greatest question was all right let's see who can give the greatest question was is is what is the right use case of cat command let's see who can give okay what is the good uh, right use case of the cat command uh, but believe me guys i'm gonna prove you tomorrow and tomorrow class is very much important tomorrow i'm gonna prove you cat is not used for read the file cat is not used to create the file append the file or concurrent the files or two or three files right this somebody else is doing behalf of cat cat is not doing that one so what is cat is doing we'll discuss tomorrow that's all guys uh, for today and um and uh, then for my side one very small thing guys uh, uh, uh for the attendance we are using your uh, comment section for checking your attendance but uh, uh i have i was uh, going through my crawler who helping me to do your attendance and what i found we have some name duplicacy issue so a lot of guys over here has a same name so we weren't able to find out uh, the you know the difference in those uh, two candidates so what we are doing uh, maybe in this week we are allocating a unique id from iac rise to you and that is a reference id forever to you guys okay and also your certificate also mentioned that ib that you are the uh, registered student of iac rise and record this training so that id guys in this week uh, we will uh, provide you the only condition is uh, this id will be uh, given by your group uh, volunteer so you should be the part of uh, the groups where you are taking the help and you have created a team so you should be part of the group where we have our own uh, certified volunteers and you are also a part of a team 
without team guys you won't able to create the project and we won't entertain your project also so you should have team with you i highly suggest to have team of four or five guys if you have six guys that's okay if you have three guy by chance may we due to some uh, exception cases we might allow but i highly recommend have uh, the team of four or five guy at least okay uh, otherwise you won't able to create the project you can learn but you won't able to create the project and we won't give the project certificate to you okay so point is guys for getting the id that will be helping us in the attendance i'll tell you guys how to use this id in the attendance i'll discuss right but for getting the attendance you should be part of the group and you should be part of the team so those guys who haven't created a team please contact to their uh, their uh, uh, group uh, volunteer he will help to uh, create the team maybe okay and those guys who is not a part of any group okay so i think uh, some day ago we mail you guys uh, the channel uh, you know url or that mail also contain 5 or 6 or 8 whatsapp number of our volunteers so we want able to if you are not able to the part of the channel or the group please contact to those volunteer in the whatsapp number they will help you to put in the channel and put also in the group okay so guys we are just started our program but this by this week onwards okay we will be engaged in lot of uh, advanced stuff or lot of group activities so please those guys who haven't done do it faster otherwise you won't able to part of any of the activity or the team uh, projects also okay that's all guys from my side thank you very much uh, for joining see you tomorrow with lot of new core concept of the python that's all guys take care good day good night